Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Climate scientists at NASA and NOAA have been working diligently for decades to erase inconvenient periods in Earth's history. The most recent version of NOAA's Global Historical Climatology Network has achieved some of their key goals. In this video, I'm going to go through exactly what they've done to rewrite Earth's recent history. George Orwell said, who controls the past controls the future who controls the present controls the past. Forty-five years ago this was the consensus view of climate. This graph from the National Center for Atmospheric Research showed a lot of warming from 1880 until the 1940s followed by sharp cooling. The post-1940s cooling was so fast that 1970 was actually cooler than 1870. And every form of bad weather was blamed on global cooling. Global cooling may be the cause of the devastating African drought now in its sixth year. Some scientists believe that expansion of the cold polar air caps pushed the monsoon rain belt southward, causing many of the life-giving rains to fall on already fertile lands or into the sea. Dry weather conditions also prevail in parts of India, China, Kenya, Bolivia, and other countries on both sides of the equator. So the bad weather was blamed on global cooling and an expanding Arctic ice cap. Now climate scientists blame bad weather on global warming and a shrinking Arctic ice cap. But note something interesting in the language in this article. It says, some scientists believe. That's very different language from what climate journalists use now. Current climate journalists aren't that honest. They simply say, scientists say. And they refuse to present any other point of view. This is a very disturbing trend in journalism. They've gone from being journalists to propagandists. This graph of Northern Hemisphere temperatures was published by the National Academy of Sciences in 1975. It showed the same thing as the NCAR graph, rapid warming until 1940 and then rapid cooling. In 1970 was no warmer than 1880. The reason people were focused on the Northern Hemisphere was explained in this 1978 article in the New York Times. January 5, 1978, an international team of specialists has concluded from eight indexes of climate that there is no end in sight to the cooling trend of the last 30 years, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Data from the Southern Hemisphere, particularly south of latitude 30 south, are so meager that reliable conclusions are not possible. I've looked at the data currently being used for the Southern Hemisphere, and the vast majority of it is complete garbage. Forty years ago, climate scientists were honest enough to recognize that fact. And down at the bottom, I have highlighted another interesting paragraph. A gradual increase in area of the northern circumpolar vortex, the massive flow of frigid air around the Arctic, has been recorded by doctors Angel and Kirschover. So 40 years ago, the polar vortex was blamed on global cooling and an expanding Arctic ice cap. Now climate scientists blame the polar vortex on global warming and a shrinking Arctic ice cap. In 1961, there was unanimous consensus that Earth was cooling. New York Times, January 30th, 1961. Scientists agree world is colder. An assembly of specialists from several continents seems to have reached unanimous agreements on only one point. It is getting colder. Pittsburgh Press, October 9th, 1974. Shifts in world climate since 1945 help explain severe food crisis. Weather records show that the annual average temperature over the Northern Hemisphere rose dramatically from about 1890 through 1945, but have been falling ever since. The total change has averaged about one half degree centigrade, with the greatest cooling in the all-important wheat-growing regions of North America and Europe. The drop has already shortened the growing season in England by two weeks and caused a dangerous southward shift to monsoon winds in rice growing regions of Southeast Asia. I was living in England in 1969 and 1970 and remember the long cold winter. This article was in National Geographic in November 1976. Just what is going on with the climate? What changes are taking place around us? From 1880 to about 1940, the world, particularly the Northern Hemisphere, went through a period of significant warming. I heard from tall, quiet spoken Dr. J. Murray Mitchell of NOAA. He is one of the nation's most respected climatologists. He went on, but since about 1940, there has been a distinct drop in average global temperature. 
It's fallen about half a degree Fahrenheit, even more in the high latitudes of the northern hemisphere. England's annual growing season shrank by 9 or 10 days between 1950 and 1966, Hubert Lamb has noted. In the northern tier of the U.S. Midwest, summer frosts again occasionally damage crops. Sea ice has returned to Iceland's coast after more than 40 years of virtual absence. During the last 20 to 30 years, world temperature has fallen irregularly at first, but more sharply over the last decade. U.S. National Science Board, 1974. Glaciers in Alaska and Scandinavia have slowed the recession. Some in Switzerland have begun advancing again. There wasn't any question in the scientific community or outside of it that the Earth was cooling after 1945, and rather dramatically. The cooling was causing crops to fail, it was causing ice to block Iceland's seaports, it was very obvious that the world was cooling. The coldest three-year period for winters on record in the United States was from 1977 through 1979. There wasn't any doubt that Earth had cooled dramatically from 1945 through about 1975, and this became very inconvenient later for climate scientists pushing the global warming agenda. So as you can see in this 2009 ClimateGate email, scientists from multiple government agencies colluded to try to get rid of the warmth of the 1940s and the subsequent cooling. From Tom Wigley at NCAR to Phil Jones at the University of East Anglia in England, copied Ben Santer of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. Phil Jones said, if you look at the attached plot, you will see that the land also shows the 1940s blip. If we could reduce the ocean blip by, say, 0.15 degrees C, then this would be significant for the global mean, but we would still have to explain the land blip. It would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we are still left with, why the blip? So it's clear that they wanted to get rid of the warmth of the 1940s and the subsequent cooling, and they didn't even have an explanation for why they were going to do it. This is not science. This is collusion, manipulation, and fraud. These people wanted to influence public policy using fraudulent data. And as you can see in the most recent graph from NOAA's Global Historical Climatology Network, that's exactly what they did. The dashed line shows the unadjusted data, which still shows somewhat of a 1940s blip, but the adjusted data has almost completely removed it. This is just what climate scientists in different government agencies in different countries said they were going to do in 2009. This data tampering wasn't done all at once, though. This was 1981 graphs from NASA's James Hansen. His graph still showed a strong 1940s blip, but it wasn't as large as in the 1974 NCAR graph. And in this graph, you can see the changes which NASA made between 2001 and 2016. In 2001, NASA showed about half a degree warming from 1880 until the end of the 20th century. But by 2016, NASA had more than doubled the warming during that same period. And in the 2016 version, NASA further removed the 1940s blip and subsequent cooling. Now let's look at some other inconvenient periods which have been erased in the most recent graphs. In the 2013 IPCC report, the global warming pause after the year 2000 was central to the report. That also has been erased. There no longer is a post-2000 pause in the temperature graph. And here's another thing which has been erased. In 1989, NOAA's top climate guy said that Earth cooled from 1921 to 1979. December 7, 1989, analysis of warming since 1881 shows most of the increase in global temperature happened before 1919, before the most recent sharp rise in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, said Tom Carl of NOAA. While the global climate warmed overall since 1881, it actually cooled from 1921 to 1979, Carl said. Now let's look at that same period from 1921 to 1979 in the current NOAA graph. 30 years ago, NOAA said that that period cooled, but now they show 0.5 C warming during the same period. I'm pretty sure that the people who lived at the time knew better what was going on with the climate than the current people who are tampering with the data. Now let's look at something else which is being erased and hidden, the warmth of the 1870s. The blue line is the 2000 version of NASA's global temperature graph, and the red line is the 2017 version. 
You can see how the 2017 version has erased half a degree of warmth which was occurring in the 1870s. This is very significant because the first few months of 1878 may have been the warmest on record. Minnesota had no winter weather during the winter of 1877 through 1878. Minneapolis Tribune, March 19, 1878, a wonderful winter. Observations on the weather have been kept at Fort Snelling since 1819. There is nothing in the memory of the living or the records of the dead that give us such a winter and spring as we have passed in the last four or five months. Indeed, we had no winter weather in Minnesota, and the first spring month thus far has been more like May than March. Meanwhile, in Australia, they were having record heat. The month of January 1878 will be long remembered by the farming community as a period of heat and drought scarcely ever known or experienced in this colony before. On Thursday, the 10th last, the heat was most intense, the thermometer registering 123 degrees in the shade and 158 degrees in the sun. There were many reports like this from all over Australia that winter. So the heat of the 1870s is also being hidden. And one more thing which is being hidden is the proxy data. Griffith's trees were removed from the temperature record by Michael Mann. This data hiding was exposed in ClimateGate emails. It became known as hiding the decline and Mike's nature trick. The excuse for removing this proxy data was that it didn't match the completely fake global temperature record. So first they tampered with the temperature data to remove the post-1940s global cooling, and then they used the tampered temperature data as an excuse to remove the post-1940s global cooling from the proxy record. That's pretty bad science and pretty blatant fraud. But the cooling after the 1940s, which has since been erased, was very real and very well documented. Science News, March 1st, 1975, The Ice Age Cometh. Chicago Tribune, March 2, 1975. Brr, new ice age on way soon. In the last decade, the Arctic ice and snow cap has expanded 12%, and for the first time in this century, ships making for Iceland ports have been impeded by drifting ice. Ice doesn't lie, but climate scientists do. New York Times, July 18, 1970. U.S. and Soviet press studies of a colder Arctic. The United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Guardian, January 29, 1974. Space satellites show new ice age coming fast. New York Times, December 29, 1974. A number of climatologists point to signs both great, a steady global cooling trend since World War II, and quaint, the southward retreat from Nebraska of the warmth-loving armadillo, to support their claim that the coming years will feature colder, more erratic weather. Some recent warnings from reputable researchers in Japan, Europe, and the U.S. have so worried policymakers that last January certain scientists at a meeting of the National Academy of Sciences proposed the evacuation of some six million people from their parched homelands in the Sahel region of Africa. In 1972, 42 top American and European investigators met at Brown University and sent a letter off to President Nixon warning of a new ice age in about a century. In 1974, the CIA reported, there is growing consensus among leading climatologists that the world is undergoing a cooling trend. If it continues as feared, it could restrict production in both the USSR and China, among other states, and could have an enormous impact not only on the food population balance, but also on the world balance of power. So you can see that NOAA has rewritten a tremendous amount of important world history. This graph is not science, it's propaganda, and it's being used in an attempt to influence policy. Your tax dollars are being used to create fraudulent graphs, which are intentionally created to influence policies which will also be used against you. These fake temperature graphs form the core of the EPA CO2 endangerment finding, which is being used to shut down the U.S. energy supply. Every American should be very concerned about what's going on with this temperature data tampering. Ayn Rand said, the hardest thing to explain is the glaringly evident which everybody had decided not to see. This climate crisis is the biggest scam in science history. 
Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.